folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back Tuesday. Everything's going all right. Just having me fill in for this week, so no worries there. Looking at ES Mini, trading down uh, about 0.05%. We're kind of flat right now. The Russell down 0.26%. And Q's off about 0.07. Dow Futures trading down 0.41%. Gold really had a nice pop up today. 2,051.90, up about 1.62%. We'll talk a little bit uh, about gold, uh, kind of as it stays as uh, kind of a hedge against inflation. We'll talk a little bit about what Larry Fink said about Bitcoin, kind of in the same vein. Silver really having a good day as well, trading up about 2.75%. Sadly, our boy Copper is off a little bit, almost by one full percentage point. We're seeing a massive tick up for crude oil futures. We got a lot of stuff going on regarding that, uh, kind of a confluence of, I guess, a good environment for increasing gas prices. You have issues going on in the Red Sea. You have issues going on, excuse me, now in the mainland of Yemen. Uh, supply issues still persist in Libya with one of the uh, major fields they have under strike. Uh, and then, of course, our listeners out in the Midwest are getting insane amount of snow. So much so, I believe that the Iowa caucus um, was kind of put on standstill because of how bad that storm was. So we have a lot of stuff going on uh, that's kind of a perfect storm for seeing crude oil kind of pump up going forward and really energy costs going up as well. Uh, Brent crude up about 1.23%. Uh, Let's take a look, Tesla. Now we'll speak about Tesla a little get, bit. Yesterday when I was on the show, uh, you know, we were talking about CPI a little bit and how that was a bit higher in December. Uh, now, based on some of the polls from larger finance firms and business, they're saying that some of those components within uh, CPI were uh, a bit inaccurate. Um, namely, one of the big drivers in December uh, was increasing housing costs. And a lot of polls from, like, as I said, big financial firms are saying that's not actually entirely accurate. And we are seeing... Uh, reduction nationally in the uh, cost of rent and homes. We'll have to wait to see. One of the things I was also talking about that could lead to a less than stellar CPI report for this month is going to be these kind of supply chain disruptions uh, that we're seeing caused by the conflict in the Red Sea uh, and then also caused by some issues regarding water in the Panama Canal. So we have Tesla down right now about 4.17%. They said starting January 29th, and I believe that goes to February 11th, they are going to cease momentarily uh, construction development at their German plant. Uh, and that's just till everything kind of gets ironed out. Now, a lot of companies are saying that uh, this might be the case as well. This is leading to a uh, pretty, sig you know, I mean, 5% down, we'll go at 4.18% down uh, is, you know, that's somewhat significant. It's on usual volume not always a great sign with it but what i would say to that is this again is definitely a reaction to news okay the past few days ever since december 27th we have seen tesla selling off a little bit and that could be due to a lot of reasons um, but i can say pretty positively that this major sell-off today uh is well i can't say positively but these these are the moments that i like getting into stocks when people sell off on major news, that's a very short term, right? And that's what I see going on with Tesla. And that's a personal preference on my end with it. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit more about that going forward. Steel Dynamics uh, had a you know, big sell-off again from that 121 area, trading about 112.93. The dollar uh, up about 0.21%, so a minor divergence, at least with the dollar and the precious metals. Looking at the Qs, going to 408.94. Google, 144.26 Meta at 373.71 Disney, trading back up into that $90 area. Apple dethroned as the most valuable company. Uh, obviously, Microsoft took over there briefly yesterday, and I think again today it established itself. Lucid, we were talking about a little bit yesterday. That's a sad stock. Um, we'll see how much staying power they can have uh, long-term with that, especially in a very uh, pricey and kind of competitive EV market. The banks... All right, let's talk a little bit about this, okay? The profits mostly fall in the fourth quarter. Um, the banks are looking that it's going to be okay going forward, economically speaking. Of course, they've had to pay a lot uh, regarding everything that happened with Silicon Valley Bank. Citigroup actually um, not doing too poorly right now. Now, they had pretty abysmal earnings 
Um, but what they came out and said was that they're going to slash a, an inordinate amount of jobs. Uh, now that's obviously positive um, for a lot of shareholders. Let's talk a little bit about this. Three of the nation's biggest banks said Friday that their profits fell last quarter as J.P. Morgan Chase, um, Bank of America, and Citigroup deal with the lingering effects of higher interest rates and the industry costs of last year's banking crisis that caused the collapse of Silicon Valley and Signature Bank. Also, First Republic Bank and, uh, you know, some bagpipes for all the guys who got in there thinking it was going to pop back up. <laughs> it's a learning experience for everyone. Uh, all the banks had one-time charges in their quarterly results, uh, many of them specifically related to their own businesses, uh, making this quarter particularly messy. Uh, but setting aside the turbulence of the banking panic and the charges, the banks had mostly a strong 2023 driven by resilient job market, a U.S. consumer who continues to spend and not fall behind on their debts despite the impact of inflation and higher interest rates that have boosted revenue across the industry, of course, uh, Banks always love higher rates like that because uh, they get higher returns on their loans. J.P. Morgan Chase said Friday that its profits dropped 15 percent in the first quarter, despite the bank reporting record quarterly revenue. J.P. Morgan's profits fell because it was required to pay 2.9 billion. Let's take a look on here in J.P. Morgan's charts. It paid 2.9 billion to the Federal Deposit Insurance Corp. That's the FDIC. Uh, as part of an industry-wide one-time special assessment by the regulator to cover the $16.7 in costs to cover the uninsured depositors uh, caught up in the collapse of SVB. Other banks like Citi and Bank of America are paying that assessment as well. Kind of interesting. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Citigroup. Uh, most of the international bank cities announced plans to wind down, restructure, or sell off its businesses uh, in the last couple of years. The bank is selling uh, Benamex, its Mexico affiliate, and is effectively liquidating its Russian operations since the war in Ukraine broke out. City posted a net loss of $1.8 billion in the fourth quarter compared to $2.5 billion profit a year earlier. Along with the FDIC assessment and some other one-time charges, the profits of Bank of America fell 50%, uh, and then Wells Fargo had some issues as well that we can talk a little bit about as we're going forward. Uh, take a look at Boeing. There's a lot of stuff coming out with Boeing. Obviously, they had the door fly off their airplane. Not great coverage for them. Uh, the, the FAA is going to start uh, looking at them a lot more closely. We'll talk a little bit about that when we get back from the break.